Hi, I'm Johnny from ultimatepapermache.com and in my last video I showed you how I made an armature for this fellow out of aluminum foil and a pattern. Uh, the pattern is out on my blog if you want to use that to make one of your own. It's a bongo. Uh, it's a rare African antelope. Faux taxidermy mount, I think you can call it. And I just had an awful lot of fun with this fellow. I wanted to show him off and show you how I did it, how I put the, the um, brown paper over the armature and then colored it with some tissue paper. I think it came out really nice. I'm very, very happy with him. So let's get started. I'll show you how this was done. One of the first things I did after the armature was done was turn him upside down, cut a piece of cardboard to fit over the back, and then put it on with some brown paper and, and paste. Um, I didn't put any paper and paste in the middle of the cardboard because I was hoping that if I only uh, got the outside edges wet that it wouldn't warp. It did still warp just a little bit but it um, it's a whole lot flatter than it would have been without it and it hangs up very nicely on the wall. There is a small hole in the cardboard now so that it can hang up. It could be mounted on a uh, wooden plaque if I wanted to. Then I covered the entire armature with some brown craft paper. The white that you see on the uh, armature is something that I showed you in the last video. The, the armature itself is made with crumpled foil, which was just a little bit bumpy. And so I tried to smooth that out with some joint compound. Um, I did say in my last video that I didn't think that I really needed to put the joint compound on the face part, just on the, on the horns. Um, as it turned out, I, <laughs> I changed my mind. Um, it, it did smooth it out. Um, I decided once this paper, this first layer was dry though, I decided that it wasn't as smooth as I wanted it to be. So I went ahead and added another layer of joint compound just to smooth it out as much as I could. I didn't cover the eyes or the nostrils with any joint compound because um, I didn't want to cover up any of the, the details. As you can see here with these nostrils, it was a, a bit of trouble getting the brown paper on there. It's fairly stiff, uh, so you have to work on it um, to get it smoothed out around all those tight corners. But um, if you can get enough paste on the craft paper to completely dampen it without really gobbling on way too much, uh, the, the paper will soften enough um, so that it will lie down properly but you will need to tear it in judicious places so that um, so that you don't don't end up with some weird wrinkles in places where you didn't want them. Of course, the eyes are the other spot on the um, on the sculpture that you really have to be careful when you're applying the uh, the heavy paper. Um, you, you do need a tool here to push the paper way into those creases because if you don't, you're going to lose the details that. Uh, that you'd work so hard at creating when you're building the armature itself. This is how the eyes looked uh, after the paper mache was on there but before they were dry. Um, I, I did redo those eyes with epoxy clay afterwards just because I didn't like the way that the color was showing up um, with the colored paper over the dark brown. I added a little support piece for the fur coming out of his ears. That's something that I should have done with the armature but I forgot. I covered the whole face and the uh, the horns and as soon as that was dry I covered again with the um, with the joint compound allowed that to dry and then smoothed it off very carefully with a damp sponge. Um, once you have the paper mache on there you have to be really careful not to get too much water on the sponge um, if you're damp sanding because otherwise you would just make everything way too wet. Um, it had to dry again once the sponging was finished. Now it was nice and smooth and I covered it all over one more time with the brown paper. And then I got to start doing some really fun stuff. I got some natural colors, some beautiful uh, warm um, animal colors from a, an online store called CratePaperStore.com. Uh, the tissue paper arrived within two days. It was just amazing customer service and they have some really beautiful colors. Um, they also have really bright um, jewel colors too, of course, like you would expect with some tissue paper. Um, I didn't think those would be too appropriate for this guy. It was actually the only place I could find that 
um, had the browns and um, just the warm sienna and, and um, nice soft whites that I needed for this. The um, paper just kept going on, um, adding one color after another, working very much like you would with watercolors. Uh, because the tissue paper, once you get it damp, is uh, somewhat transparent, it will dry lighter than it is um, when you first put the paste over it so you never really know exactly what color is going to be when it's done but uh, you just keep adding uh, little bits here and there until uh, the entire thing is covered and you have essentially painted uh, the piece. It would have been a lot faster to go ahead and paint it <laughs> but I think this is a lot more fun uh, and it, it does help in, in, in this case um, because this is a faux taxidermy mount, I, I think the paper just makes it a little bit more fun and, and more obviously uh, not a real dead animal, uh, which I uh, very much appreciate. I used some white um, paper towel underneath the really white parts, that one stripe across his nose and then the uh, white fur on his uh, ears. I actually uh, wrinkled that um, the paper towel on his ears just to make sure that it would uh, look a little bit more fur-like. And then I put the tissue paper over the white paper towel. When you put the really, really light uh, tissue paper over the dark brown, um, it just the color just doesn't come as bright as I needed it to in those two places. Now you can see um, that here I've, uh, if you look rather closely, while I'm putting the um, uh, the tissue paper on his horns. You can also see on his eyes that I've replaced the uh, the colored tissue paper and the uh, paper mache on his eyes. I just didn't like the way it was looking. I used some epoxy clay. I've never used it before and frankly I don't really like it very much. Um, I'm I'm hoping that it was just because I didn't do it right but it seemed kind of sticky. It um, stuck to the tools. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that wasn't the way it was supposed to do but it, it um, it wasn't easy to work with, but it does look an awful lot better um, because it rounded it out nicely in a way that I wasn't able to do with the brown paper uh, paper mache. And also, I kind of cheated and painted <laughs> the um, the burnt umber over the eyes, so I had a nice color that I I'm not sure I could have gotten with the tissue paper. I kind of cheated. I did make the um, the black uh, pupil with uh, the tissue paper though. With these close-ups, I think you can see that you can really get some nice variations in color by layering the tissue paper um, one color over another. That, that really turned out nicely, especially on that cheek area. Thanks for watching. Uh, that's it for today. Um, I want to make sure that you come on out and visit me at ultimatepapermache.com because lately we've had some really wonderful guest posts. Uh, people who make wonderful things and, and show us how they did it, but they don't have videos on YouTube. So if you only see my videos here, uh, you're missing out on some really cool stuff on my blog. So come on visit me, ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.